In the words of our brother Diogo, earlier today at Mass, we heard another set of shake-and-bake readings. <laughs> a little fire and brimstone from the Word of God. In the first reading we heard, Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble. And the, the day that is coming will set them on fire. So, evildoers, watch out. <laughs> Then in the Gospel, we heard a complicated reading in which Jesus spoke of the destruction of the temple, the coming persecution of his followers, and the times of the Son of Man. And we heard that while some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Now, at the heart of these prophetic shake and bake words of Christ, there's a message of hope and a challenge to place our trust only in the Lord and a call to follow Him in faithfulness. Jesus' prophecy of the temple reminded me of an experience that I had while traveling in Austria. One day we took a boat ride down the Danube River touring the beautiful countryside of Austria. And all along one side of the river were small rolling green mountains. And at the top of one of these mountains was uh, what looked like a pile of rocks. So we stopped off at the nearby town, hiked up the hill, and at the top we found the ruins of a castle. There were still the foundations, a few archways, stairways, and what appeared to be a prison. Uh, but uh, that's all that was left of it. And the glory of this castle, that was simply left uh, as a distant memory. And looking out from the walls, you could see the town below, the river, the farmland stretching out for miles, once the domain of a feudal lord. And reflecting on this experience, one of my fellow, flat, uh, fellow classmates commented that this castle was once the lord's stronghold, the symbol of his power overlooking his domain. Yet as we looked out across the valley, all that was left of these ru were these ruined castle walls. And he asked, did this Lord ever think of his own limitation or mortality, or was he driven by blind ambition as he sought to secure his kingdom? We stood on the hope of one man's future, and it was a past that was long gone for us. This reminded me of the Israelites in today's gospel, who placed such tremendous weight in the physical structure of the temple. It would have been unthinkable, catastrophic, for the temple to be destroyed, Yet this is what we saw historically happen in 70 AD. And it made me think of the many walls and the structures that I place my own hope in. The little domains that I still hold onto as my own. So often I place my hope in the walls of my own efforts. My ministry, my studies, my talents, even my prayer life. We don't need to be a feudal lord in medieval Europe to succumb to the illusion of our own self-sufficiency. Capuchin Cafe, writing that illuminative paper for Franciscan Masters of Prayer, preaching that moving calmly are all good things, but only if kept in proper perspective. There are ways for us to respond to the Spirit in the present moment, to respond in faithfulness to God's call. They are never ends in themselves, and as soon as we make them ends, uh, any ministry, class, a hobby, when we make it an end in itself, it becomes an obstacle between us and God, our ultimate end. They become a wall or an edifice that will need to come down between us and God. And when it comes down to it, they're all things that are going to pass away. There will be a day when no one remembers Capuchin Cafe, or preaching, or that awesome paper. So, I admit that this is incredibly hard for me to keep in mind. That when I have a job to do, it becomes my sole focus. It easily becomes an end in itself, and so easy to forget the why of what we do. I think of this tendency as something that we fight against with our vow of Franciscan poverty. That we seek to possess nothing as our own, that we might see Christ unhindered. This vow frames and orients all of our activities. In not appropriating anything to ourselves, we are available to choose God in every situation. So as we plan our Capuchin Cafe, write out our paper, or prepare our homily, it is simply an expression of saying yes to God. As Jesus speaks of a coming persecution in today's Gospel, he tells his followers not to prepare a defense for themselves in the face of your opponents, 
but that he himself will give uh, them wisdom for speaking. And this saying often boggles my mind, and I wonder if Jesus is maybe just speaking to extroverts who <laughs> process things externally. But regardless, I see uh, in this an admonition to the same sense of poverty. There's a certain vulnerability that Jesus is calling us to uh, here in abandonment of ourselves and trust in God's providence. I also think it speaks of, the, of an authenticity that we're called to live our lives. So I've never, handed over, uh, I've never been handed over to synagogues, prisons, kings, or governors by my family, but I have experienced the testimony of others, and it strikes me that when I've been evangelized, it's not from a prepared script laying out the ten points of why Christianity is the right religion for me. Rather, it's by the authenticity of another's example. I've been witnessed to by my confirmation sponsor, who's the father of ten, in seeing the love that he treats his family with. And by a professor who was moved to tears when he was teaching us uh, of the scriptures. By the honesty of friends in college who shared their daily struggles with me. By the hum or humility of sisters who cared for those who are truly poor. And by brothers who come together daily as a community to worship and share a common life. All of these experiences of being witnessed to were because of the authenticity of the individuals whose faith and attentiveness to the Spirit took such deep root in their lives that it emanated to those around them. So when we go before others, this is how we're to go, not with a prepared script. So, as we conclude, let us reflect on what edifices we have in place that are preventing us from coming to the Lord in true humility and trust. And let our authenticity of faith be our primary witness for those we encounter. Amen.